Today, Americans enjoy countless freedoms and liberties that are taken for granted. Children are given educations, citizens receive equal voices in electing representatives, and accused criminals stand fair trials. There is perhaps no one else in American history who has had a greater impact on American rights and society than Earl Warren. Earl Warren redefined the power of the Supreme Court Chief Justice, protected the rights of countless American citizens, and wasn't afraid to make difficult decisions for the better good of the nation. Earl Warren was a hard-working, diligent, impactful man who had his values and morals instilled into him as a child. The son of Norwegian immigrants that moved to California in search of gold in the American dream, Warren grew up in a poor family of four. He learned firsthand the concepts of humility, respect, and loyalty when he took on a job for a railroad company as a teenager. By working to provide for his family, Warren first began to learn how he could put others before himself. Soon, he adopted the skills required to become a responsible leader in his family. However, Warren had high aspirations too, wanting to become a lawyer. Although he was only an average student, he applied to the University of California, Berkeley in 1908 and laid the base of his political career. Through hard work and determination, Warren earned his degree six years later and joined a law firm in San Francisco. Only three years later, in 1917, the course of Warren's life was changed forever. When the United States entered World War I, Warren joined others, thousands of others in a surge of patriotism, enlisting in officer training. Although Earl Warren wasn't medically fit enough to go abroad and serve stateside instead, he had received his first taste of serving his country. In 1919, Warren officially began his life of public service when he became the Deputy City Attorney of Oakland, California. He began to steadily progress through the ranks of the county offices, eventually becoming a District Attorney for three terms from 1926 to 1938. It was here that Warren began to express himself politically and take a stance against crime and corruption. He then jump-started his political career by running for and winning three straight gubernatorial offices of California from 1942 to 1954. Warren became so popular that he won all three party nominations for his second term. The only election Warren ever lost was the 1948 Republican presidential race as the vice presidential candidate. Even after this defeat, Warren's popularity and dedication to fighting crime and reforming society as California's governor made him President Dwight D. Eisenhower's choice as the 14th Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in 1953. Earl Warren began his career as Chief Justice and almost immediately began to preside over one of the most influential court cases in American history. Just after he had been appointed, Warren was thrust into the spotlight of a struggle that America had grappled with since its very genesis. After Warren had handily combated problems in the rapidly growing state of California, he went on to end the decades-long practice of segregation in the impactful Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court case in 1954. He soon faced new, more complex problems that would set the guidelines for generations to come. It was soon the 1960s, technology was improving, a young charismatic John F. Kennedy had been elected president, and it seemed that the nation had decades of glory ahead of it. However, as America's power, military involvement, and status as a superpower grew globally, major problems loomed at home. The American population was increasing as droves of citizens moved to cities in search of jobs and industry, bringing with them a spike of crime. With racist tensions still strong, police departments began to employ an increasing variety of controversial methods to subdue protesters and speed along the trial process of suspects. In the South, high-powered water was used on boycotters and non-lethal electric shocks. However, everyday suspects were also affected by questionable methods local courts employed in trials. One of the most important issues faced by the Warren court was the rights of the accused, and Earl Warren had to step up as a leader of the justice system because of it. The struggle wasn't easy for him, as ruling for the criminals would result in the average man finding him a radical liberal, and ruling for law enforcement would question how constitutional his rulings were. Also, Warren realized these decisions would result in becoming the precedents for future cases of this kind because the Supreme Court had never seen these types of cases before. Therefore, Warren, through two major cases, will be responsible for drawing the line between freedom and justice for the accused. In 1961, Clarence Earl Gideon was charged with breaking and entering of a pool hall in Panama City, Florida. When he was brought to trial, Gideon asked for a lawyer to be appointed to him because he could not afford one. He was refused and told that lawyers were only appointed in capital trials. The trial proceeded and Gideon was sentenced to five years in prison. He immediately filed for a habeas corpus petition, arguing that because he lacked a defense attorney, his conviction was unconstitutional. In another unanimous decision, the court ruled that the Sixth Amendment gives defendants the right to an attorney in serious criminal charges if one cannot be afforded. 
Earl Warren used his hard-working background and empathized with the impoverished Gideon, recognizing that an attorney was essential in preventing an uneducated man from incriminating himself in court. By not acting high-handed and spoiled by his now prestigious background, Warren exhibited his ability to connect with the everyday citizen and realize which of their rights were being violated. The result was the epitome of American democracy. He, Gideon, the least of the least, could not only appeal his wrongdoing to the highest court in the land, but also succeed in triumph. The effect of the Gideon v. Wainwright decision on today's society cannot be overstated. By recognizing that lawyers and criminal courts are necessities and not luxuries, Earl Warren had an immeasurable impact on the operation and aspirations of the American criminal justice system. Greater expectations are now set on public attorneys and defenders, and most of all, America has attempted to protect the interests of society's most vulnerable and lowest members. Because of the court's decision, citizens from all walks of life, ethnicities, and religions are afforded fair protection under the law, truly what the framers of the Constitution had in mind. Finally, Earl Warren was able to protect the rights of countless individuals who were under scrutiny of the law. Enter Ernesto Miranda, a 22-year-old delinquent living in Phoenix, Arizona. Miranda has spent his life in and out of juvenile detention centers and prisons since the age of 12. On March 13, 1963, Miranda was pulled over and questioned as a suspect in the rape and kidnapping of Lois Ann Jameson. During his interrogation, police reporters took him to the station, implied he was positively identified, and, without informing him of his rights, forced a confession out of him. When the case went on trial, prosecutors relied heavily on a so-called confession, finally using it to get him convicted of two counts of 30 years in prison. When he appealed to the Supreme Court in Miranda v. Arizona, they overruled the decision in a 5-4 vote headed by Chief Justice Earl Warren. In his court's decision, Warren drew on the Fifth Amendment, saying that Miranda was denied the right to refuse to be a witness against himself. Warren believed that unchecked power and being able to interrogate suspects could lead to police and political abuse of power. Warren argued that police use of intimidation could lead to false confessions. Warren's limitless capacity of looking out for the rights of citizens is shown as he fought to protect the rights of even those who are viewed as the worst of society, the criminals. The Miranda v. Arizona Supreme Court decision in 1966 still continues to have a major impact concerning criminals in the United States. In an attempt to protect the self-incrimination clause of the Fifth Amendment, the case disseminated the common warnings of today of appointed counsel and silence that are required to proceed any interrogation before it can legally commence. This ensures that those arrested are fully aware of their constitutional rights as citizens and shows the importance the justice system places on knowledge of these rights. If suspects are not informed of these rights, the evidence from the interrogation cannot be used against them. Overall, the Miranda decision embodied Earl Warren's ideal that law enforcement could continue to protect the safety of the public without conflicting with citizens' basic rights. Earl Warren characterized the definition of leadership as the 14th Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. He was a man that was never influenced by money, political parties, or what others thought about him, building upon his strong foundation from his time served as Governor of California. As Governor, Earl recognized the growing need to stop violence and crimes in the state, and he set the precedent that he would rely on for the remainder of his political career. His leadership as Chief Justice was evident, fighting his way through landmark cases like those mentioned earlier. Warren stuck by his opinion and didn't care whether or not citizens agreed with his decisions. He soon found out that when working in politics, many people will disagree. United States citizens showed hatred against Warren, claiming his rulings were too liberal, fitting to a time when Warren was making an attempt to end racism in a socially segregated society. But even through this adversity, Warren's supremacy as a Chief Justice allows his legacy to live on in modern America. Through the importance and impact of the cases in our everyday lives, and his resilient eagerness to execute his ideology. Justice Jim Newton, author of the Earl Warren biography Justice for All, stated, Together, the landmark cases of Warren's court compromise a vision of government that helps its neediest while resisting the temptation to overreach, a government that sets parameters of decency but recognizes its limits. That is a great legacy of moderation, one befitting to a man who defined the political center in California and who went on to redefine it for America.